In this video, I'm going to show you how to optimize export settings in Apple Studio. Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Seven Beats, and in this video, I'm going to dive deep into the topic of how to export your tracks or beats in the best way possible. So the way you export your music can make a significant difference in the final quality of your music. Whether you're just starting out or you're an experienced producer, I'm sure there are some very useful tips in this video. So let's dive right in. So the first step is to look at the export settings. So we're gonna select file, we're gonna select export, and then we could simply select the first one, which is WAV file. Then you simply pick the desired folder where you want to export the file. So at first I picked WAV, but after you selected that, you're still able to make some changes. So first up, we select project type. So we always want to make sure when we export a full track is we select song, so full song. And when exporting a full song, you make sure you select leave remainder. So it's basically adding a tail at the final milliseconds of your track. So this avoids clipping or popping sounds. So if you want an explanation of what this means is on the top left corner. So right here you can see the length of your track, total time in seconds, and the amount of space is gonna to take to save this file. So the next step is picking the right file format. And we basically have two options, which is again, WAV and MP3. So right now let me explain the difference between WAV file and MP3. So a WAV file is a uncompressed file and a MP3 file is a compressed file. And the goal by compressing a file is basically reducing the file size. So an MP3 file is preferred when you, for example, send over files to friends or other producers. And if you're uploading music to YouTube, to, for example, Spotify streaming services, I highly recommend you upload a WAV file. So for example, when you upload a video or B to YouTube or a streaming service, there is an algorithm which reduces the file size to make sure it's easy to stream. For example, a WAV is a relatively huge file and everyone should be able to play the file with without any buffering or whatever. So that's why files are compressed. So you always should aim to upload the highest quality audio file as possible. So I don't want to go into too much detail because it's getting really technical, but if you upload a 32-bit float, but you always want to pick the highest amount of bits. So in this case, it's a 32-bit float. So every data point of a signal is saved in a 32-bit format. So it basically contains as much information as possible. You could simply decrease the file size by reducing this one. As you can see, the disk space is reduced. So the bigger the file, the more information about your audio signal is saved. So you simply select 32-bit float. In almost all of the cases, you want to export this file in stereo. But in Apple Study, we also have the option to upload a WAV and MP3 file. So you don't have to render them separately. So you basically select them both. And then we're gonna talk about the MP3 bit rate. So again, the higher the bit rate, the more information is saved. So the maximum bit rate is 320 kilobytes per second. And at minimum, you should export a file in 128 kilobytes per second. You basically won't even hear a difference, but when you're uploading to, for example, YouTube, and YouTube will decrease the file size. So again, use an algorithm which compresses the file, it will decrease the audio quality. So again, if you're uploading an MP3, you want to upload it in the highest quality possible. So there are also possibilities to export a file in OGG, FLAC, MIDI, or for example, M4A but you don't need to export a file in those formats. Then we're gonna talk about quality. So again, we're talking about resampling. So resampling an audio signal. And we want to do this in as much data points as possible. So we basically pick the highest quality one, which is of course the slowest because the computer needs to render more data points, but simply select this one. Of course, when you're using VSTs or digital plugins, you want to render them in the highest quality as possible. So when you're, for example, creating the music, is always saving some CPU. But when you're in the end exporting the signals, you should be able, if the plugin supports this, to export in the highest quality possible. So make sure to select this one. Then there is this option, tethering, but this is basically decreasing your audio quality. So you want to make sure this is disabled. Then let's talk about miscellaneous. So for this video, I'm not gonna cover this one because this is not about the audio quality, but this is basically adding more information to an audio file. For example, loop markers, note markers, and the tempo information. So for example, if you're a DJ and you want to 
play the song which you've exported in a DJ booth, it's really helpful if you can see the tempo information. So for example, this one is really helpful. And then we could enable show files when complete. And then you can simply press start. And that's it for this video. I hope this helped you. If you have any more questions, make sure to drop them in the comments and I will answer them. And I hope you have a great day, create some awesome music and see you in the next video.